At the casino, we all just hung out. There were two or three ping pong tables in the front along New Street, and the movie chairs were always taken down and there was badminton. And so you would go and sit on the sun porch and play cards or play badminton or play ping pong. And the other thing about the casino that, that I think is very interesting was it was a very open club. It, w it wasn't expensive and they really didn't care if people belonged. And all the kids were welcome. And there's a, a healthy crowd of year-round kids that grew up here that were always in there playing ping pong or doing whatever. And then I started working at the casino, uh, booking tennis courts and uh, sort of operating the desk, keeping things in order, although there was really wasn't a whole lot to do except make sure that the people got on the right courts. And, and tennis was becoming more and more popular then. There were movies all the time, and of course the place to sit was upstairs uh, for the children. And um, one of my problems was um, my mother insisted on a sit-down dinner and insisted that I dress for dinner, which meant putting a skirt on. And I couldn't go to the movies without wearing my skirt, and that was so embarrassing because nobody else, well, no, I had a few friends who, the parents must have been in cahoots, and they, they had three of us doing that, but um, then uh, everybody else appeared in their blue jeans, and we felt so embarrassed that we were forced to dress like this. And the, I used to help Albert Brock, who was an insurance broker in town, run the projector, because they showed films in the casino. Um, three nights a week. It was a professional projector of the kind that they would have used in regular movie theaters of the day. Uh, it whirred around, made a lot of noise, it got very, very hot, and uh, the film needed to be threaded by hand, and there was only one, so there were breaks every however long the reels were, 20 minutes, to put on the new reel. Um, but when it got to the screen, it looked pretty good for a somewhat amateurish production. <laughs> we used to get into a little bit of deviltry. We'd go over to the casino, climb over the fence, open the window, and sneak in to see a movie. That wasn't really... But a lot of us did that. Well, one of the big things in the summer was the masquerade. They, at the casino, they had a children's masquerade and they had an adult masquerade, but I don't remember much about the adult one. But the children one was a big competition. I th the competition was more among the parents than the children. The children just wanted to go and, and have a good time and have a party and win prizes and go to the dance and do all of that. But the parents competed a great deal about these costumes. And I remember one in particular, Betsy Beinecke and I, we went as the Widow's Walk. And we were dressed as uh, in black in Widow's costumes with black bonnets and white shawls and we each had a telescope and we had carried a fence around us. I don't think we thought it was as grand as they, our parents did but it won the first prize and that was what they were after. So. That's great. And then they had pet shows you know, and you'd dress your dog up and take all of animals and whatever you had to the, to the pet show, and we had um, uh, the rummage sale. Fireman's ball, policeman's ball, they were the rowdy ones. And then, then finally in 1946, the On the Isle program came. The director came from New York, very fancy, and all these wonderful costumes came, you know, real Broadway-type costumes. They were marvelous. We had rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal. He'd do certain parts like anybody else would do, but we were totally dedicated to this. And um, we had uh, Lester Lannan's orchestra at one time. We had uh, Tommy Gerard um, from Marshard's orchestra and One Year Marshard. Everybody in the village was in it. You know, there were kids' numbers and there were old ladies' numbers. And uh, there were uh, ones that, of course, we did, which were the best. <laughs> One of the people I remember so well who was in it and was so good every year was Joan Wilson. 
little tiny girl. Oh, she was marvelous. And it was wonderful to see children as young as six years old, I would say, on stage and their parents. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to peep in there before the annual performance in August and see little tots and big tots rehearsing. And the, the discipline they have, uh, this, 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 well, it warms an old man's heart, and I think other hearts too. I think it can't be resisted. And that's unique. And Jerry Dickinson, who is no longer alive, had a wonderful old gray car with a rumble seat, and we'd go around with these flyers and throw them out all over the place advertising this. And one year, Ted Stanley Brown and Jerry Dickinson got in a plane, as I recall, and threw these things out of this little airplane, and they fluttered all down on Sconset and town. And we, we just had a, you know, it was, it was everybody together. It was uh, fun. It was, uh, oh, I don't know. It was just... Everybody could do everything, and it didn't matter who you were. It was marvelous.